WARNING! The following video is over-exaggerated. This game hasn't aged well, but it's still a classic. The following opinions may or may not be accurate to my actual thoughts. I... I... This game is overrated and hasn't aged well. When you're five years old, don't know what you're doing, and you run into the first Goomba. So I just beat Bowser, but instead of a princess, there's this mushroom guy saying she's in another castle. Are you freaking kidding me? This game is way too easy. The jumping mechanics are innovative, but feel clunky. It takes too long to build up speed. You can't go backwards in a level. Mario only has one type of move, and that's jumping. When you get hit with a fire flower, you downgrade all the way to small Mario. And speaking of power-ups, we only have three. What kind of idiot leaves a giant axe near a bridge? Bowser can be killed with fireballs, but yet breathes fire. Logic. I have never seen anyone swim like Mario does. What is he doing? Also, fireballs underwater. Pretty sure that doesn't work. Lekitu is so obnoxious. Since when were the Hammer Bros so difficult to kill? Ugh, like for this one! I swear, it's impossible to not get hit unless you're Fire Mario. If you lose all your lives, you go all the way back to the beginning. So if you grab a Fire Flower as Small Mario, you only turn into Big Mario. Buzzy Beetles are like roaches! You can't kill them. World 8-4 gives you no clues as of what pipes you're supposed to go down. Timing those stupid spring jumps is a pain. The multiplayer isn't really multiplayer. You just take turns. And the final boss is nothing special. It's just Bowser again with the stupid hammers. There's basically like four or five songs in the game, and that's it. According to the manual, all the bricks have toads inside of them. That quickly got disturbing. Why does this game have to freeze when Mario is getting a power-up? I've never understood that. Those flying cheap cheeps are always random and annoying. Honestly, do the points even mean anything? It's not like this is an arcade game. A lot of the backdrops and themes are the same. There's little variety. Reusing levels again. Very classic, Nintendo. There's no variety in the fireworks. They all look the same. Since when did touching the top of the flagpole get so hard? Oh, oh, right, right, the newer games spoil you. Yeah, I forgot about that. Those terrifying jumps at the end of 8-3. Most of the worlds aren't too bad, but then there's World 8. I don't like World 8. The warp zones are cool, but way too game-breaking. I can't do that glitch to get to World Minus 1. The time isn't accurate to real-life time. Okay, I went through all of this crap to save Princess Toadstool, and she's not even that cute. She's all yours, Bowser. WARNING! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So don't mistake a poison mushroom for a normal one, okay? Apparently, American gamers weren't good enough to play the real sequel to Super Mario Bros, so instead we got a reskin of Doki Doki Panic. So... This game is way harder than it needs to be. Now I'm glad I stayed in Japan. Ooh, what's that new mushroom? What? It kills you? I love how sitting at the title screen ends with Mario killing himself. The jumping mechanics still feel pretty clunky. I like that Luigi controls differently than Mario, but he's even more annoying to use. Sure, he jumps higher, but it takes even longer to build up speed and slow down. The plot hasn't changed at all. Peach is captured and Mario must save her. Why is it so difficult to grab this mushroom? They didn't bother updating the graphics at all. There's no new music, not even remixes. And you still can't walk backwards in a level. Why didn't they fix any of the first game's problems? It shouldn't be impossible to grab this fire flower. The platforms with the mushrooms look so tacky. Did some high schooler hack in these textures? You thought the Hammer Bros were bad in the first game? Well, now they chase after you. This warp only takes me to World 2? That's lame. Why do the springs launch you 50 million feet in the air? So you see this jump? Yeah, it looks impossible, right? Well, here's what you gotta do. You gotta find two invisible blocks to get across. Ugh. And how do you make this jump? I've been trying for like three years and I'm, I'm having no- Oh. Oh. Oh, of course. Of course that's all it is. What? There's warp zones that take you back levels? <laughs> oh great, now I'm forced to use enemies to make jumps. Good level design. And that's the thing, man. The level design overall is random and unorthodox. Passing half these stages requires a lot of trial and error. Instead of expanding on the two-player mode, they just cut it out altogether. 
could these Lekitus possibly be any more obnoxious? The freaking win! The one big new future that we didn't need or want. They couldn't add a blue background to indicate this is a water section? Or is this supposed to be like a flooded castle? To get to World 9, you have to play through the whole game without using warps. And that's fine, you know, just make us suffer as much as long as possible. Mm -hmm. What is this psychedelic nightmare? God, the colors look awful. I really hate when you have to take certain paths in a castle to make progress. They're so annoying to figure out. And I gotta say, I'm really not a fan of the red piranha plants. So three out of the four levels in World 9 are water ones, okay. World C3, you got endless wind, endless springs, and the level just never seems to end. This final jump really sucks. Pieces page with Kingdom Save, Harut to Mario, our only hero. Th that is not a good sounding rhyme, guys. It sounds terrible. I like how half this level has literally no enemies or obstacles to worry about. Am I the only one that really hates bloopers outside of the water? Do you want to know how to unlock worlds A through D? You have to beat this game eight times. Count them eight times without using any warps. Well, that tops a bunny turd ball on this shit Sunday. And you want to know why that sucks so much? Because when you first hear about this game, you're just like, Oh boy, I love the original, so this has to be fun! And then you start playing it, and after 10 minutes has passed, you realize that it's basically the same game with frustrating levels, unimproved mechanics, and one new power-up that just kills you! What a slap in the face! So here's the deal, guys. Don't trust this game, don't emulate it, don't search for it, don't mess with it, don't take it on a date, don't feed it, don't clean it, don't believe in it, and just, just, just don't play it! Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So don't throw vegetables at me, alright dude? <laughs> Say it with me everyone, this game is a reskin of Doki Doki Panic! Good, we got the most obvious fact out of the way. Okay, seriously? Radishes as a weapon? What kind of game is this? Where's my fireballs? And why doesn't jumping on an enemy kill it? Like what the heck do- uh oh, you can pick it up. Okay, that's actually kind of neat, I'm not gonna lie. Fanto, just freaking Fanto. If you've ever played this game, you know how obnoxious he can be. Okay, seriously, what gender is Birdo? And why do we still not have an answer to this question? I mean, it's not like it really matters, just be as you as you can be, okay? <coughs> If you get a game over and run out of continues, you go all the way back to the beginning. So either get a ton of lives or become a Mario god. Also, getting extra lives is complete luck. You have to make a match of three in a slot machine, and you can only do this if you use the potion to get coins from the ground. And yes, there's one-ups in the levels themselves, but they're extremely scarce. So apparently, spaceships grow in the ground. I never thought I'd live the day to see this. When you go up or down a level, the whole game stops so the screen can move. The NES was more primitive, yes, but it is annoying to deal with. This waterfall is destroying my eyeballs. Like, like, like seriously, don't stare at it. Honestly, the only good character is Peach. I shouldn't have said that. How the heck do I get across this freaking gap? Oh wait, I have to ride an egg. Okay, that's kind of clever, but also stupid. The pause screen is so bland looking. It looks like it comes from a Game Boy game. When you get stars in Super Mario Bros. 2, you actually just turn into a zombie. I hate fighting Mauser, especially when you're standing in this corner because it's the easiest way to grab the bombs, but you miss picking one up and then a million bombs spawn in that spot and you just gotta wait for the explosions to end. It's just, ugh. Why do you randomly get eaten by a bird after beating a level? Digging through the sand can be a nightmare if you don't know what you're doing. Oh come on, a dead end? Are you serious? Would you guess that if you wanted the first mushroom in 2-3, you have to bring the potion all the way to the left of the level? How is anyone gonna know that since for all the mushrooms before, the mushroom is right next to them? So touching the top of the whale's water spout is fine, but the water below hurts you? It's kinda hard to tell what's quicksand and what's just normal ground. When you throw an enemy at the ground, it doesn't die. You have to collide it with another enemy. Oh great, now I'm getting nuked by some birds. There's no two player. You can't even take turns playing through the game. I applaud Mario Bros 2 for having more unique bosses than just Bowser eight times in a row, but why am I fighting Bowser twice? And same goes for Triclide too. Okay, I get the background was going for like a sunset look, but it's just pink. I mean, I can make that in Photoshop. You just select pink, click the bucket, and bam. There's no shades of color or anything, and it just looks janky. Also, ice physics. Nobody likes ice physics. So Peach has blonde hair in the artwork, but in the game it's brown. So which is it, Nintendo? Maybe she's secretly Daisy. Hi, I'm Daisy. 
and now I can pull bombs out of the ground? This game is getting dark real quick. Climbing up the vines really suck. The controls get so slippery. The final boss with war sends a bad message to kids. Hey look, vegetables are bad for you. I'm dying from eating this nutritious food. Oh, of course, the whole game was just a dream. Way to end this in the most stereotypical way possible. Warning. The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings, so don't make me wear a frog suit. Got that, boy? Those people that say Mario 3 is better than Mario World, they're just wrong. I'm pretty sure Cacti can't bounce around like that. Why does the mushroom always seem to go in the opposite direction? All the Koopa kids are way too easy. Well, except Wendy, but still. And that wasn't even talking about Boom Boom. Apparently he can like fly and stuff, but you'll never see that because he's gone in like three seconds. It's awesome that there's a hammer suit and all, but good luck hitting anything with that arch. And also, why is the Goomba shoe in like one level and that's it? So are the Boos wearing mascara or is it like one of those bandit mask things? Maybe it's just the shadow of their giant eyebrows. I, I, I have no idea. It would have been nice if I could turn on and off those stats at the bottom. It just makes the game screen smaller. You know you're having a bad day when the goddamn sun is out to get you. And it gets worse! Next thing you know, the water is rising and some giant fish wants to eat you in one bite! Give the guy a break! What's so special about the giant world? Everything is just giant. Yeah, that's really clever. Can I get a world where everything is just yellow next? 8-1. Like, seriously, just look at this. Look at it. Your princess is in another castle. Are you serious? I spent all of that time flying through hills and deserts and giant pipes and literally avoiding the sun and I saved the wrong girl. Just kidding. Honestly, nobody even used the statue with Tanuki Mario. It doesn't serve any meaningful purpose. Why isn't there a save feature? This is a long game, man. Most people aren't gonna finish this in one sitting. But there's warp whistles, you say. Yeah, you have to know to kneel on this random block for like six seconds and then run to the end, because that's totally obvious. Why the heck are radioactive waffles being used as obstacles in the castle? I mean, I don't know if they're actually radioactive, but if they were radioactive, wouldn't that mean that everyone, including Bowser, would get get sick from radiation poisoning? I can't line up the freaking pictures. This game is rigged. I want my money back. There's no way I'm gonna memorize all of these cards. And even if I memorized a few, I'll forget what they were the next time I see them. So Peach apparently gave me some jewel, but I have no idea what it even does. I don't seem to be more powerful. I have to wait for the shell to break all these blocks. I don't like waiting. Ugh, the background of this castle is really eye straining. It looks like actual barf, but in black and white. Legatu actually learned how to throw spinies, and I don't like that. Aw, those guys are kinda cute. What the heck? They puke spikes? Okay, okay then, all right, yep. Pick a box. Its contents will help you on your way. Well, don't mind if I do. <laughs> This is why I have trust issues. What on earth is the king doing to his chair? <laughs> now, who else out there uses the P-Wing at 5'9 to avoid this entire level? Yes? No? A anybody out there? Just one of you in the comments. Just one of you tell me that you use the P-Wing at 5'9 to avoid the entire level, please. I might even pin the comment. I like how the ice background is literally just blue and white lines. 6-5 is such a confusing level because it just loops over and over again. The only way to beat it is to fly up this random hole with a Koopa shell in your hands so you can destroy some blocks and nipper plants. You know, a, a hint would have been really nice. Apparently, Cheep Cheeps have the power of invisibility. See, look, they just pop right out of the water like nothing's happening. Ah, so we are playing a Kaizo Ron hack. I thought so. Good lord. World 8's airship levels are some of the longest and most brutal Mario levels I've ever played. And there's four of them. Why does this level feel like a Zelda dungeon? Like, where do I go? What am I supposed to do? Why is this happening? What kind of moron would put breakable blocks over a pile of lava and then try to squish Mario over them? Only Bowser, I guess. Why does this king look like Mario? I mean, I'm, I'm not just seeing that, am I? Warning. The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So please, don't don't send over running Eastern Island heads. That ain't nice. This game is way too short. There's only 12 levels. 
Wait, why is everything so tiny? This is on a Game Boy, where the screen is already small. Mario's physics are so wonky. The jumps have inconsistent momentum, and when you fall, you fall like a brick. The fireballs are horrible. You can only throw one at a time, and they bounce around for like five years if you don't hit an enemy. Why on earth is the star music the can-can? I like how the Goombas just look like skeleton heads now. The Koopa Troopas are puny. It's so easy to take a hit because you don't land on just the right pixel. Also, they explode when you touch them. Why? Oh my god, you can't go backwards! If you get a game over, you start all over again, unless you've scored 100,000 points. Then you can get one continue! Wow, what a deal. Oh, okay, well, that was a pretty short game. I guess I already saved Princess Daisy? Oh, alright. What? Oh, come on! Okay, there we go. Now I think I saved her. Unless she's- oh my freaking guy! Okay. Okay, this has to be the real Daisy. I, I I don't think I don't. Why would there be so many fakes of the same? Th why? You know how when you finish a Mario level and get to slide down the flagpole, it's so cool, isn't it? Well, in Mario Land, Mario just walks through a door, and that's it. Every boss is way too easy. For the first guy, you literally just jump over him. The second one, you just hold right and can avoid him entirely. The third one, you can just damage boost through, and the final boss has a really easy pattern. Why are the one-ups little hearts? Like, I know that's nitpicky, but come on, I'm playing a Mario game, not Zelda. So I love playing with the submarine and the plane. They're pretty fun levels, and it's a good change of pace. But when you get hit, why does the vehicle shrink with you? Look at how giant these spiders are. <laughs> why is Mario jumping on humans? That just ain't right. Man, I can't get these coins. The gap is too small. Okay. Oh, oh, right, that's interesting. It looks like Mario flew to World 2 with a spaceship. If he has a ship, why can't he just fly the rest of the game? Oh, good. Glad I knew about this tiny invisible block. The names of these bosses are ridiculous. The Sphinx is called King Totomesu, I think. The Sea Dragon is Dragon Zamasu, Dragon Zamasu, okay. The Easter Island head is Hayu Ahoy, Hayu Ahoy, yeah. And the cloud is Bio Kintan, Bio Kintan. What, what even are these? Why? Oh God, my eyes, it hurts. Why do bullet bill cannons pop out of pipes? I didn't realize I was playing Super Mario Maker. If you think about it, the flies and tarantulas are basically the same enemies, but just reskinned. Their behaviors are identical. Honestly, the final boss is pretty anticlimactic. Like, you start by fighting a cloud that shoots birds at you. Then this Tantaga guy pops out in a spaceship and it's just like... Eh. Why do people think Luigi and Daisy are a thing? Mario just saved this woman from Tatanga and now they're flying away in a spaceship. All alone. Yeah, Mario gets around, honestly. He's got Peach, Daisy, and freaking Pauline. God damn. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Because really, this game does a lot to stand out from every other Mario game. Hop aboard the bunny train. Why is the 2 so freaking big for the logo? A world map for a Game Boy game like this is incredible, but that water is destroying my eye sockets. I get the team means time, but does it really need to be there? It's pretty obvious already. Why does Fire Mario have a feather over his head? That's because he can't see the difference between regular and Fire Mario when it's in black and white. Thanks for the info, pal. Don't mention it. Wait, why are you in my closet? You know how everyone says the propeller mushroom is overpowered? Well, get this. Bunny Mario can float in the air forever if you mash fast enough. Good golly gracious. Why does the star music sound so creepy? I've always wanted to play a level inside Mario's crotch. If you game over, you see Mario's literal gravestone. Well, okay, not really, but it kind of looks like it. The crane is grabbing Mario's nose. Oh, and now it's grabbing his ear. Oh God, that's gotta hurt. You may not believe this, but I actually own this stage. See, there's my NV initials right up there. Where have I seen this attack pattern? It's strikingly familiar. Damn, Sonic has seen better days, let me tell you. Is that a cowfish with horns? God, I love this game. This is the most basic auto-scroller ever. There's literally no enemies and the jumps are so easy. For this bird boss, you can literally just stand in one spot and just float over his head for like a five second knockout. 
Honestly, all the bosses are way too easy. Let me get this straight. You get eaten by this Koopa and go inside to find a whale, which means this turtle ate a whale. The fire! Why can you only spin jump when you're big, Mario? Mario shouldn't be throwing fireballs in space as it's much more dangerous. Fire in space can start at lower degrees and can last for much longer. Like, look, this is just science that I googled in two minutes. You should have done the same thing, Mario. The first space level, I could only jump higher than normal, but the second one, I can basically fly around. I guess the law of physics don't exist in Spaceland. Those scary spikes might be threatening if I wasn't able to just hold right and run and never get hit. When Mario dies, why does he throw up the peace sign? Something about that is kind of demented. Apparently, these fire things are called F-Boys. Why not just call them fireballs like every other Mario game? Well, not much else to say about Mario Land 2. But we aren't done there, because we haven't talked about the Mario Kirby educational video which references Super Mario Land 2. What the heck are you talking about? Aha! I finally don't have to be reminded to add things in the videos! Oh, don't forget about Luigi U, or the NES Classic, or Mario Sonic 1 or Olympic Games DS! Yes, that's right, I got this under wraps now. Okay. O okay. Alright. So this is all in Japanese and I have no idea what's going on. So I'm gonna try to piece together this story. Peach has some letters she gives to Mario and the letter is about Wario. So then Mario takes a cart and crashes into the nearest farm so he can eat a carrot and become a bunny. Then he finds some guy flying a plane that's wearing a mask for some reason, but lo and behold, it's actually Wario. Yeah, Mario couldn't see through his mask, which is pretty pathetic if you ask me, but Mario jumps up and literally punches the freaking plane out of the air and it crashes. Then Mario goes back to Peach and she's reading some books out of a suitcase like nothing happened. The end. This is some deep lore. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So don't choke me with a big yellow cape. Sound Gucci? <laughs> Those people that say Mario World is better than Mario 3, they're just wrong. Mario straight up punches Yoshi just so he can eat stuff. Indy uses him for an extra jump! The animal abuse, man. Oh come on, Yosh. You're not gonna go in the ghost house with me? <laughs> Wimp, why do they get rid of so many power-ups? Like, where's the Tanuki suit, or frog suit, or hammer suit? Uh, why am I randomly fighting a set of four rhinos? The Koopalings are still way too easy. No, I don't want to play football. Leave me alone. The ghost levels are cool, but holy crap, they can be so freaking confusing. The Rip Von Fish won't stop stalking me. Like, look, I know Mario's got that thick booty, but he's not your type. Is there any reason the Goombas don't look like Goombas? If you don't find any of the alternate exits in the forest of illusion you will literally be stuck in a circle with nowhere to go this is going to be nitpicky but look how far off the spacing of the words are i could park an 18 wheeler in between we and fine i know some people like the controls but i just feel like i'm slipping and sliding all over the place the top secret area is so broken it's like a toad house from mario 3 or the new super mario bros games but it never disappears so if you just want to go ahead and grind out a billion lives with two op capes go for it those goddamn rainbow shell koopas that you can't stomp. I mean, Yoshi can eat them, but still. They call themselves the Amazing Flying Hammer Bros, and they don't even fly! The flying blocks do all the work! What the hell was the castle made out of? Sticks? You know, I don't think they added enough paratroopas. Clearly, it's too easy. <laughs> what? Butter bridge? That's funny, because all I'm seeing is wood. I can't believe it's not butter! I'm so sorry, I just had to throw this in because to this day, the name of that butter is still the dumbest shit ever. This checkpoint almost isn't worth it since the stupid shell is basically guaranteed to hit you. I love me some soda, but I would not want to be in Soda Lake. Could you imagine being covered in sugar, caffeine citrate, and citric acid? Yeah, it sucks. Nope, Mario did not just swim up a waterfall. No. Apparently, picking up a block underwater lets you swim faster. Interesting physics going on there. Mario's fireballs aren't even intimidating. They look like orange gumballs. Oh, that's obvious. Swim through the wall to find the secret path. I mean, duh. And then there's the exit where you make that huge blind jump. I mean, gosh, try not to be so obvious, game. So I guess the programmers thought straight platforms were really boring one day. Oh, come on. How was I supposed to know that Yoshi coin was coming up? 
Is this super long, overdrawn, and boring segment supposed to be challenging? Because it's not. What are these stage names? Gnarly? Tubular? Funky? Way cool? Mondo? What, you mean like the drink Mondo? Oh, dude, I love that drink. Say hello to what might be the worst water level in any platformer ever. You know what's outrageous to me? How many freaking bullet bills there are? I mean, they don't actually look like bullet bills in my footage, but they're still bullet bills, okay? Where did you get such giant balls, Bowser? Mario, the princess, Yoshi, and his friends are going to take a vacation. Wait, could this game be the prequel to Super Mario Sunshine? Because Mario, Peach, Yoshi, and the Toads are going on a vacation in that game, and it's the only time it's ever been referenced in the past. And what did that lead to? Let's see, Mario going to jail, forced to clean gallons and gallons of sludge off of several islands, watching Bowser lie to his son's face, and a million other freaking things. And after all of that crap and a ruined vacation, you'd think think Mario would realize Peach is some sort of bad luck charm, but no, he just doesn't learn from his lessons, that dumb